Betty, if you can, how are South Africans taking the ruling? What's the mood like? The mood like there's so many big stories, uh, but in this case, uh, it's a field day for the opposition. Uh, so a lot of them are going to town insisting that we must, uh, uh, the MBA must um, uh, uh, reinstate the charges against the president, taking back that he must have his day in court. Uh, but the president's uh, legal team, of course, the, the president, the presidency released a statement saying they're disappointed, but they hope to have room to make representation to the MBA. Of course, people believe these are all stalling um, uh, strategies to ensure that this lasts as long as possible. But the, the, the ANC, which uh, some of the top officials attended the ANC Veterans uh, Party uh, uh, event today, are cautiously trying to stand against the president, saying we shouldn't react uh, with sentiment regarding this, that it must be dealt with uh, in a system systemic manner. So um, they're cautiously standing by the president, not say, saying they're going to watch, they're going to study the judgment as well, but all eyes are on the, the NPA to see the next move because that's where the, the, the ball is now. And for President Jacob Zuma, this appears to be a corruption case that just won't go away. And he appears to have had an eventful presidency, what some call, uh, that has seen him survive eight votes of no confidence. Do you think he will survive this as well? Could you repeat that? I didn't hear you. Well, I was saying that, you know, for President Jacob Zuma, this really appears to be a corruption case that just won't go away. You know, he has appears to have had an eventful presidency. Surviving eight votes of no confidence, do you think he'll survive this one in the end? Well, uh, if this gets to trial, everybody is buying the popcorn and the drink to watch how it will unfold. But I know that the president's team will be working overtime right now to ensure that at least, if, if, even if it gets to trial, it won't get to trial now to delay it as much as possible to make their representations, which they have a right to do. Uh, representations um, to to uh, influence probably the configuration of the MPA. Remember, the charges have not been reinstated. The the MPA is to decide, is expected to decide whether to to reinstate the charges or not. Uh, finally, Betty, are you one of those buying the popcorn and the drink? Um, and what do you think um, <laughs> with regards to the trial eventually? Would it be a protracted one? Um, as, I, as I just <laughs> said, they will be ensuring that uh, uh, before it even gets to the point of trial, if it will, uh, they will use a lot of time trying to, to prolong it, you know, before it even gets to the point. Because chances are, if it gets to trial, that's it, you know, for the president. But um, uh, the, the, the legal team has the room, still has the room to make representations to the MPA. So we'll see how uh, that will play out and uh, see if there will be enough pressure to make the NPA say, okay, fine, we're going to court with this to reinstate the charges. All right, but it's going to be interesting. All right. Thank you so much, Betty. It was a pleasure having you on Network Africa. South Africa's Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu turned 86 on the 7th of October and one in a string of activities to honour him was the annual Desmond Tutu International Peace Lecture in Cape Town. The Nobel laureate was present with his wife, Lee, but did not make a speech. The guest speaker at the event was renowned conflict management specialist, advocate Vasu Gwandan, who was asked to respond to the question, South Africa, civil war or civil peace? Advocate Gwandan also made a passionate plea to Nigeria. The gathering comprised all the colors of Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu's Rainbow Nation, all gathered here to honor him at 86. Yeah, he is it. 
I love you and I wish we could have you for many, 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 many more years to come because you are not only a national and global treasure, you are truly a family treasure. Responding to the question, South Africa, civil war or civil peace? The guest speaker, renowned anti-apartheid activist and conflict mediator, advocate Vasi Gaudin, reminded the nation of the sacrifices made for freedom, those who sacrificed, and what must be done to ensure it's not all in vain. 23 years later, we owe it to them, and we owe it to the Arch and his peers to make sure that the colors of the Arch's rainbow get brighter. We correct our moral compass and stop those who only see the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It is only when the rainbow of hope and prosperity touches each and every South African that we shall all be secure, free, and enjoying civil peace. I thank you. On the socio-political conflicts Nigeria is currently experiencing, he made a plea for collective resolution. I would say to Nigerians, you have it within you to ensure that you manage and resolve your conflicts peacefully. You have more than anybody else as Nigerians a history of coups and counter coups, and you know the devastation that that brings. And you've seen now the uh, handing over to civilian rule, and you've seen what uh, civilian rule can bring to your society. And I would urge all Niger Nigerians to stick on that path. The Desmond Tutu International Peace Lecture annually takes stock of local and global affairs that touch on peace as a product of many ingredients, including harmonious relations within and between nations. And opposition supporters are back on the streets in Kenya. Kenyan police used tear gas today to disperse protesters in the country's three main cities as a standoff between the government and opposition leaders over a planned repeat presidential election continues. On Thursday, the government banned demonstrations in the central business district of Nairobi, the coastal city of Mombasa and the western city of Kisumu. Interior Minister Fred Mutiangi says that the order was meant to protect, quote, Kenyans and property. Opposition supporters have been holding regular demonstrations to push for electoral changes before a fresh election is held. The Supreme Court had earlier annulled the August 8th poll declaring incumbent President Uhuru Kenyatta as winner over Raila Odinga. But Odinga withdrew from the race this week, saying the election board had failed to institute reforms to ensure a free and fair election. His opposition alliance party called for demonstrations demanding a new election with a brand new election board. Still to come on Network Africa. A local organization in Burkina Faso gives teenage mothers a second chance, offers support to help them plan their future.